Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian oversees one of the world's most expansive collections of Native artifacts. Southwest Native American jewelry is highly recognizable and a coveted art form. On view at the museum's George Gustav Hay Center at Bowling Green are more than 300 examples of this exquisite contemporary jewelry made by one family of talented artists. Now, NYC Arts goes on a journey to Gallup, New Mexico, to the Navajo Nation, home to the Yazzie family. Jewelry is a very significant part of Navajo culture. It's really a reflection and a relationship between the individual and the stone. It's a relationship with the land. It's a relationship with everything that's Navajo. Glittering World is an exhibition that focuses on the brilliant work of Lee and Ray Yazzie, two very talented brothers and their family, uh, many of whom are also Navajo jewelers. There are over 300 pieces of jewelry in the exhibition. We have bracelets and squash blossom necklaces. There are rings and belt buckles. The jewelry itself, of course, is very beautiful and a lot of people appreciate it, but they don't really understand the story behind the work. So what we've tried to do is provide some cultural context as well as some historical context so that viewers can really appreciate what goes into each piece and really see the work differently. The Yazis come from a very large family. Their parents used jewelry as, as a means to support themselves when the children were young. Elsie worked at home making jewelry. Chi Yazi, the father, would take the work into town, into Gallup, and go to the trading post. Historically, Navajo people have only been making jewelry for about, maybe a little bit over 100 years. It was introduced in the late 19th century and eventually became a really important trade item. There are also a lot of uh, photographs in the exhibition, both of Gallup as it was in the past and Gallup as it is today, different scenes from um, the reservation that really give you a feel for the landscape of New Mexico and where they were raised. Lee Yazzie is, is the oldest um, son in the family who is a jeweler. He is very wedded to the traditional forms. He's really taken these, these patterns and these designs to an extreme. His work is very strong in terms of light and shadow. He is really a master when it comes to working with silver in particular. He's a huge fan of turquoise, so you see that appearing quite frequently in his work. The blue corn bracelet is inspired by a cob of corn that he saw when he was harvesting with his mother. It's really a great example of Lee Yazzie's innovation in the field to be able to look at ordinary things around him and see design possibilities. Ray was very, very focused on becoming a fine jeweler and an artist from a very early age. This was something that he wanted badly and he pursued very aggressively and his work is incredible. It's almost architectural in its form. He also incorporates gold into his work and um, very fine inlay work. Uh, he also is very fond of using many colors in his work. So there's definitely a very different aesthetic between the two brothers. Ray is really proud of the Blessings bracelet because he was really challenging himself to see how many pieces he could get into that single work. So it's really a spectacular explosion of color and form. Another artist in the family that we focus on here in the exhibition is Mary Marie Yazzie. She's the eldest daughter in the family and is really the family matriarch at this point. She herself strings beads and creates her own material. Uh, several of the women in the family are known for their fine work making Navajo silver beads, which is a very labor-intensive process but creates some incredibly beautiful results. Well, working on this exhibition was really a privilege. I am Navajo myself, and of course, jewelry has been part of our lives um, 
since I can remember. So for me, this exhibition was really a great opportunity to learn myself about what contemporary Navajo artists are doing with it today and to see it as a contemporary art form, not just as something historical, but something that's really moving us into the future.